All right, so of course, this is the part where we are hanging with a South African football legend. We just, we want to know a little more about them. We want to get into their minds. We want to also just take it back to where it all started for them and how they managed to get to where they are now. And today, we're rolling it back to that guy who did it on the 11th of June, 2010, at a packed FNB stadium. You will know him as Shaba. You will know him as that guy that that, that did that beautiful celebration, right? Right? And he did this. And yeah, that guy. That guy that almost won a pushkas. I kid you not. He's chilling with me now. It's very great to have you, my brother. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You are retired. You're not playing football. I just want to start there. What are you doing with your life? Like, what, what is what is what is a day in the life of Pio Chabalala, the football retiree? Okay, um, I'm not yet retired, so the status is still green. Okay, uh, which means active. You actually never really did come out with the official confirmation that yes, yes. guys, yes. innocent could be like a baller. It's just we haven't seen you playing football in three years, so now we're just thinking, ah, this guy is done. Most. So I've been playing football. Um, behind closed doors and um, I've been enjoying it. Uh, it's been great and I've been very busy as well um, in a good way, um, spending more time with, with family and uh, also uh, dedicating my time uh, on my foundation uh, through the in initiatives that we have. And currently we've got, um, you know, our ninth edition of our annual football tournament, which has been keeping me very busy. You see, that's what I don't understand about you footballers. You haven't retired. In fact, sports people in general, you haven't retired. You haven't announced it officially that you've retired. And yet here we are as media and broadcast people, we're thinking that you already have. When will be, when, it, when, when do you feel it'll be the right time to say, as in, okay, I'm officially done with the sport of football as a player. You know, when do you think Will it be your body that tells you that? Or the it'll just come to you? Yeah, I, I, I think there's, there's never a perfect time uh, to, to do it. It's how you feel. I mean, I can wake up the next day in the morning and say, as in, I, Chai Le Manji, um, thank you to football. You know, so it can happen anytime. And whenever that time comes, um, I'll be very happy. I still am today. Even if I would do it now, I'll be very happy. Um, there are no regrets. Um, you know, there were highs, there were lows, but I'm, I'm eternally grateful for, for, for the opportunity, you know, to, to live my dream, uh, for, for the opportunity to take all the boxes and most importantly for the opportunity to touch lives, yeah. you know, through, through my talent. Does, does the rest of the football fraternity know, Guti, you haven't retired? Because this is going to go out to the public. And I'm, and I'm sure you've said it once or twice, but people didn't really I, pick up I, on I, it. I keep telling them. And, and uh, I see most of them, they, they don't want me to retire. They still want me on the field. <laughs> and, but signing is not an issue, um, you know, the so there are options is, on the table. There are yeah, people that the have been talking is, to you. Is buy in, you know, into the project as well. I think that's the most important thing because yeah. we we at the level whereby it it it's no longer about me, me, me. Yeah. You know, it's about the ones that are coming. It's about, it's about okay. the ones that look up to you. Yeah. So, um, I'm I'm teaching through my journey. I'm teaching a lot through, you know, through football. Yeah. So, and the teaching doesn't stop because we, we learn all the time. We, we yeah. learn every day. So they'll understand, yeah. you could see that that time eventually will come, whether it's in 10 years or 10 days or 10 weeks, yeah. at some point it's going to come. And when it comes, you embrace it and then you, you move on. Okay, so what you're saying is basically if Real Madrid is to come to you and they say, listen, Shaba, uh, we would like your services here when you're not thinking yeah i want to win champions league titles i want to you know you're thinking here's uh, vinnie jr here's rodrigo here's Kylian mbappe there are things that these boys can learn from me rather let me teach not about i don't want to be a serial winner I'm, I've, I've won as much as i can i've done everything from guienza now it's just about teaching the bafana laba that have still got such a long way to go so for you it's if you were to go back on the field and wear a kit it's not about your personal 
achievements. It's about yeah. the, the greater good of football. Exactly. And, and, and most, most important, uh, thing is, is to do it at home and also in, in Africa as well. Yeah. Um, I think it's high time that, um, you know, African football, um, it's, it's been taken seriously. And also we, we, we grow and we compete at the highest level. And we, we, all of us, because my fan is doing it. We yes. we're sitting with the bronze medal after two yes. decades. H hence, I'm saying we, like the entire African yeah. football, it it needs to be um, at the top, yeah. so that you know when when you have um, national teams that are doing well, um, when you have teams that are competing in the in the in the, in the continent, it improves the standard of football. Yeah. It in, it improves um, uh, players' quality, their well-being as well. So holistically, um, it, it, it improves everything, even, 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 um, the economy as well. Cause, you know, football is not only for recreational purposes as well. It's, it's, it's the one of the drivers of the economy. So hence I'm saying that we, we have a role, we have a duty, uh, uh, uh in that, in that field to make sure that we, we, we grow as well and we, we, Try and head to that direction um, of matching, you know, um, the standard of Euro yeah. of Europe because there is a potential here. Administration-wise, I think it was um, proven uh, in the last edition of the Afcon. You know, we were one of the best Afcons uh, from administration, from planning, from yeah. marketing, uh, even you know, uh, playing at the competitiveness of 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 the of the games as well. So we head into that direction and we must make sure that, you know, we, we have a strong footprint here at home and, and then we can start focusing, um, abroad. So that's, that's my, that's my vision. So I, I want to find out you, you, you sound so passionate about African football, which is great because, you know, there's a reason for that now, both male and female on the women's side, the recent World Cup we come from now, Banyana, Nigeria, and if I'm not wrong, Zambia all qualified for the knockout stages. That, that was massive. You look at on the men's side, the first time Africa qualified for the semifinals. Do you think that it's realistic that we will go one step further? And I mind it's one step further. I'm talking, it won't, it won't just be one African nation in the semis. We'll have two. Now in, 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 in the Americas World Cup in 2026, that we'll have two African men's teams in the semifinals from a, a competition of 48. Right, that on the women's side, it's possible that as Pele Luguma round of 16, that the women go further, quarter final, maybe even semi final, whether it's Nigeria or Banyana Banyana, anybody. Do you see what we've done as Africa, yeah. what Petrus Mutsepe and his executive and everybody under him have done in just these last two, three years can, can take us a step further, that there's still more that Africa can prove to the world? Definitely. We've, we've taken good strides and, and there's progress. And, um, you know, sometimes we as a people, um, we have dreams and we have those dreams that are far fetched. And now the dream that was far fetched was like, you no, know, uh, an African team cannot win the World Cup final. An African team cannot, um, um, you know, reach the semis. And, and Morocco being the first African team to reach the semis as well, it, it made that dream that was far fetched now realistic and believable so a, a lot of dream a, a lot of teams rather they now they they have a dream and they they can see now that you know it can become a reality uh, through you know hard work and and contrary to to that statement as well you've got france uh who are um, you know uh, former world cup champions and 90 percent of of um you know um the squad of France. Descendants of this continent. They come from Africa. So, so it also, it's a, it's a, I think it's also a mindset thing as well. That if we believe, uh, uh, also putting the hard work, the effort into it, it is achievable. And the investment, because a lot of these guys, by humble, because it's better to go live your life in Europe and assimilate to the European conditions instead of coming and representing. Bukayo Saka should be playing for Nigeria. But he's sitting playing for England. I fully agree with you. You know, when 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 an opportunity like this arises, you you take it. We we want to grow. We want to improve our standard of living. We want to take care of our families. 
and it's a it's a it's a big opportunity as well but it's also a lesson to us that um let's do things the right way let's protect what we have now let's focus on 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 our development and invest in our development and put necessary resources into our development so that we can you know harness that talent nurture it and then we'll be able to to yield you know um great results in in future because at the moment um there's a lot of you know export uh, yeah. uh, uh programs and then they go that side they are well developed when they come back um you know they add value to the national teams but now they're adding value to the national teams at the highest level so why don't we invest more here and and make sure that we also you know manufacture our own yeah. uh and when they're ready uh then they're able to help us but now it 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 becomes a long term thing now it's a system because when you have a a a a Samuel Eto um and then Samuel Eto is delivering results you don't wait for Samuel Eto to be 35 to prepare for the next Eto so now we we start as soon as that one you know um start playing well then you start uh you know manufacturing another one yeah. so it, it becomes a system so you have mbappe that's representing france and winning a world cup at 19 now that what exactly. once you clock that you are cooking another mbappe at 16 exactly. to also get there at, at that so yes yeah, so the cooking doesn't stop but fana fana as well um we must start cooking now you know when you look at the players that um are doing well and and they they in their prime now that's when you start now you know you start now so that when 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 they phase out these ones are ready they are prepared because they are they are in the system and they are also familiar with the environment as well do you feel like that's not happening right now in south african football do you feel that uh, you know these clubs the big clubs that have got all the infrastructure and the resources and the money they are not doing enough to start cooking their players now because i'm not i'm not hearing or seeing a lot of you know under 23s for example that are there's not a lot of under 23s you know in 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 the PSL so do you feel that it's the, the the progress and development is a little too slow yeah i wouldn't say they're not doing it i would, I would say maybe it's, it, it it's at the slow uh pace as well unlike before um i mean before you you have um you know Kaiser Chiefs producing maybe three or four um you know uh best players coming from their youth ranks and then not fit in into the first team and contribute as well and add value i mean you're seeing someone like at orlando parrot you're looking at rule wile mufuke exactly and parrot as well yeah. so now i'm talking about your errors of your 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 tovila yeah. you know coming from um development structures and breaking into the first team and become a key player you know jabupule the same yeah from development uh straight to the first team and he was um you know a key player as well so we we need to go back there we need to uh also you know review and check um what worked uh and what didn't work and what is the problem now why are we not uh produ- producing best players you know from from our development structures and when i'm when i'm saying development it's not entirely on you know uh uh your top 16 PSL teams yeah. been grassroots football mm, there's, there's, there's some Mitsubishi abundance Mitsubishi. of talent there I'm I'm in that space I see talent every day but when there's lack of, of opportunities we lose talent what are you guys saying though what are you guys saying who who doesn't listen to it if Shaba says to a big club or even to the clubs in the ABC Mutsipe that listen guys I've got a foundation. I've got I'm 9 years into my annual football tournament. I'm seeing this talent. I know talent. Come on. Come on, help us grow it. What are, what are they saying to you? Just like now, I mean, uh through this initiative, we've, we've had players that played and they played well and they got you know the opportunity to be scouted and now they're playing for Chiefs. I mean, uh, great youngsters with with big potential, big talent. and fundo villagazi um um 
Shabalalam to Shabalalazo. They played in the tournament. And now I'm currently sitting with uh, over 500 players in the campsite. And most of them, they're outside Gauteng. So um, we've got eight provinces that are being represented. So when you have a team coming from Eastern Cape and Western Cape, traveling for over a thousand kilometers to come and play uh, in the tournament where there's not even, you know, um, a, a, a proper field in terms of, of grass. Yeah. It, yes, they love football. We commend them for that, but it's a cry for help. There's lack of opportunities. You know, these boys, they just want opportunities. They want to be seen. The beauty about it is that they love the game. Their passion is there. You know, no one is forcing them. Uh, uh, to play the game. Hence, they travel all the way yeah. and make that sacrifice, you know. But it also, it's also said that, you know, they'll travel back, most of them, without being even given a chance of just an assessment, not to sign them, just an assessment, an assessment. So it's, 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 it's a, it's a big cry for help, uh, at, at development phase. I'm there all the time. I, I know what I'm talking about. I, I know the challenges as well. You know, we, we've got abundance of talent. Um, in Africa, in South Africa, the skill that we have, I mean, uh, only a few teams, uh, countries can match us. So I'd, I'd compare ourselves with, with, uh, Brazilians in terms of, of style, style of play. Skill. Yes. But the difference is that, uh, a Brazilian once he's 10, 12, they start developing him. And then they send him to um, local teams, but they invest in him. Recently, um, uh, what's his name? Enric from, he just signed with Madrid, yeah. 16, 17. Where are our 16 year olds? There's still somewhere in development. Some, there's still some, somewhere in Soweto. So that's the model as well that we need to check because it's working for, for, for the Brazilians. Most of the Brazilians, they sign with top European clubs at 15. 16, 17. So it's a good, it's a good model. It, it, it works for, for the Brazilian, um, teams and it also works for, for football in general. Cause these players are, are most of them, they play in, in, in the top five best leagues. And when you, when you compete in that space, you know, um, chances are that your national team will have best players, you know, so it's also an investment at national team level. Let's look at you now. Let's, let's go back to where you, it started for you, because you are, what you're talking about and what you're passionate about, you are exactly the product of that. Good development, good investment, someone that saw you and said this, something here, you know, and they invested in you. You, you started off, you were in the Kaiser Chiefs developments as well. You, you had one point at Free State Stars, you one of the very few players that actually managed to represent his country playing in the first division. We don't, we don't talk a lot about that. You know, that national team decided that there's talent in the first division. Let's go look at it and, and, in, and, and believe in the fact that it, it's good enough to represent its country, that we don't have to go to England or, or to Europe and find South African talent, that we don't have to only look at the 16 teams in the DSTV Premiership. Let's go to Municipal Ch uh, Foundation Championship and we'll find something there. What was special about you then that they felt you were good enough to represent your country? while still trying to fight for your chance in the top flight? Um, so, so my, my, my national team big break um, came in 20, 2005 uh, in, in December. So it was my first season, I was a rookie in the PSL. And I, I got a call up, um, it was PSL 11, yeah. So. I didn't even understand. I was told, no, there's a, there's a call up from PSL 11. You must go to Joburg. It was just before Christmas break. And then you're going to play against Bafana Bafana. So when I was there, uh, you know, practicing, and then I got a call from Free State Stars that I got a call up, uh, to represent the under 23s. So I was excited because I think we, we had the best team there. Yeah. The under 23s were the best. Your cheese boy, your, your, your late Ndukas, your late uh, Cyril. 
you know, Tepo Masilela, you know, best, best players and great, great talent. So on, on match day, and then we played Bafana Bafana. I only played 45 minutes and, uh, that was the best 45 minutes I've played. You sold yourself which, to the national team yeah. coach in 45 minutes. I promise you, because we, we, we went to, you know, uh, half time, went to the change room. So I just felt something yeah. and I was like, no. And then they just attended me, but, uh, they got a call from the other change room that no, you mustn't come back. We've seen enough. Yeah. Though I was told later, you know, uh, that no. People, said, people, the, the world, and I'm talking hundreds of millions, if not billions of people, watched you score one of the famous World Cup goals. If anything, that is the most famous World Cup goal historically. Right? True. Because it's the first day of the first African World Cup. And it is the man that is donning his 50th cap for his national team, scoring one of the most beautiful goals. That day all started with 45-minute try for the national team. Yeah. That day, yeah. all started back with 45 minutes and you sold yourself to the national team. Yeah. And uh, after that, then um, uh, the next day, so on a Sunday, um, I came back, I went home because the game was in Devon. Yeah. Then I was tired, so I took a nap. And then I got a call from the then team manager of under 23, Bani Kujan. Mm. So he calls me, says he introduces himself to me. So I was still, you know, uh, a bit sleepy, very, very deep. And then he says, no, um, hey, the coaches are fighting now. So you cannot, you can no longer come and join us uh, in the under 23s. So you go into Bafana. Then I just said, oh, okay. Then I just hung up. I, I just slept. It didn't make sense to me. So I was thinking, okay, now they decided otherwise. So, so, wait, wait, so in, in, in your mind, you're hearing, yes. you're hearing uh, uh, Brabani saying to you, uh, Chief, your time with us is done. Now. Yeah. And it was still But it didn't click. But, but you were you're going to yeah, the senior team. No, no. It, it just didn't make sense to me. So then I think about an hour later, it was around, I think, 8.30, if I'm not mistaken. I got a call. Also, it woke, you know, the phone woke. I was woken up by a call. And then my friend says, hey, congratulations, you are going to Egypt. I'm like, what? Yeah, you're in the national team. Uh, Mafana, Mafana. Like, oh, thanks. I went back to sleep again. It didn't even sink in. Up until I was woken up, by my parents, and they were telling me as well because they kept getting calls. I had to wait. I remember it was 10 o'clock news bulletin at Ukozi FM. I had to listen to the squad announcement. And now, so there was, I was a bit confused also because there was a Shabalala, but Sailor Shabalala. Yeah. I was like, no, man, they meant maybe Sailor Shabalala. It can't be me. And then I got a call that tomorrow we're coming to fetch you. So the, 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 the driver from the national team, then Shaba, came. Wait, I'm sorry. Shaba, <laughs> you found out that your dream has just come true on Ukozi FM. True. I was so, so, Bani Kujani tells you that you are going to the national team. You, it's not clicking. Yeah. A good friend of yours tells you you're going to the national team. Friend. It's not clicking. Yeah. Your parents are saying to you, hey, chief, we keep getting these calls. It's not clicking. It took a radio station saying to you, uh, of the 23 men squad going to Egypt for 2006 AFCON. Sheila could not believe it. I thought, I thought maybe that it was Sheila Shabana. I started believing it, uh, the next day mm. when, when, when the national team driver and the security personnel came, uh, to, to fetch me. And then we went to, um, Johannesburg Stadium for our first session. So we were driven there and then we are, um, arrived and then we were waiting for the entire team to arrive in a bus so you can imagine um first season in the psl five months yeah. into the psl because you, then, got, um, that, you yeah. got that call in december and the season started in august yes yeah it's four months yeah, yeah. 
So now I'm seated at uh, Johannesburg Stadium. That okay, we're, we're training in, in an outside field. Those, yeah, we're seated there, and then this big bus pulls in, and then the big boys now coming off the bus. I'm like, what? It's all villagers. This Busto Zuma, Jay Mavizela. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> so we had the first session there, and then. I was nervous. Yeah. Um, um, I won't lie to you, I was nervous. Um, I, 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 I still felt that, you know, um, the time that we were still preparing, uh, I, I, at somehow I felt that maybe they might change, you know, um, their minds and say, no, I think. You felt like you we, it, it, it didn't sunk in yeah. and, and, Eventually, when, when I, you know, when you we went to Oar Tambo, when you boarded that flight, and then I felt like, okay, it's happening now. And yeah. They can't pull me out of the airport at yes. this point. And the first game as well. Because there was no time to, to prepare yeah. and take everything all in. You know, we arrive in Egypt. Uh, we play a friendly game against Egypt. Cairo Stadium, packed. It's flares yeah. and lasers and and then and then I'm on the bench. We all went for, you know, a warm up, and then they sent the physio to, you know, uh, call me. So still, like, I was not sure whether it was me or the person next to me, and then they said, "No, you." So just to make sure, I even said, "I really, really mean it." Like, yeah. Then I went, and and. I got my chance and I did well. I, 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 oh, we I, remember. I, I did well. We remember. And then, yeah. And then uh, days later, first AFCON as well. So it, yeah, it happened really fast and it was like highlight after highlight after highlight, like big opportunity after big opportunity. And yeah. Was that the, was that the perfect way for your career to start? If you were to go back to 2005, uh, pre-season of the 2005-2006 PSL season and they say to you rewrite your story going forward would you have done it differently would you have started your career a little calmer easier to allow you to ease into your professional career or do you feel like the Shaba that we now know the world star that we now know today that's how he had to start his career for him to be who he is now yeah I I, I... I couldn't change anything. Um, I, I think it was, my path was already written as well. And, um, first season also in, in, in the PSL. Um, I, I, I checked two fixtures. I was just waiting for the fixture to come out. Yeah. So I checked two fixtures only. Chiefs home, Chiefs away. That, that that's actually well that, that's where I, it was going to take me next it's like so there you are you're sitting at home you know you're you're a teenager who has got these big dreams of football and everybody has a club that they want to play for everybody has a favorite club the Comodice's favorite club much to my shock was Kaiser Chiefs and then he's Orlando Pirates legend and a Sundowns legend who did you before you began your career who did you always want to play for for life Chiefs you, so you you always wanted nothing else yeah. Sundowns and Pirates come to you and they put better money and a better dream in front of you. And they say, listen, this is what you can achieve with us. I declined their offer. When I was, when I was in, um, we're in the first division, Free State. So each and every game, there was Sundown Scouts watching Free State Stars, right? Each and every game. Home, away. They were always there. And then after we won um, in a promotion, the last day that we, 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 we won a uh, promotion, and then I was seated with, with my then bosses, uh, Mukwena brothers, yeah. Ranti and Kutsu. Yeah. Happy, you know, about the, the, the promotion and all that. And then they told, they're the ones that told me that, uh, have you noticed when you play, when, whenever we play, there's, there's a crew from Sundowns watching our games. So like, yeah, they were sent to come and scout you. 
I was like, what? Okay. And Sundowns is a big team. Yeah. So uh, you, you can imagine, you know, a, a, a team of, of, of Sundowns caliber, um, you know, sending their trusted scouts to scout for talent. Did she ever a scout you? Not really. So when they so showed there's, interest, there's, it was... The story with Chiefs is... It's a beautiful story for me. Yeah. Because I, I grew up, you know, supporting Chiefs, loving Chiefs. Chiefs was everything. And it, it was a team that I wanted to play for. Yeah. I even went to join that development, mm -hmm. under 15s, under 17s, and then under 19s. But I had to stop because of uh, the schedule was clashing with, um, you know, the school schedule as well. So always got in trouble with the school headmaster. So I had to stop. I left. I, that's how I left Chiefs, yeah. right? And then years later, um, I'm in the PSL. Now we're playing against Chiefs. Big moment for me. Playing best game of your life. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, I told myself one thing there. That after this game, they must ask who's the, who's number, um, 16. I was wearing number 16. Who's number 16? Who's that Shabalala boy? After that game. And after that game, I got a call from Bobby. <laughs> <Best game. laughs> you know, and, and I was, I was so excited, but, uh, I, I, I couldn't express my excitement yeah. to him. Yeah. Just after. Like what? Chiefs. <laughs> Called me, pop him down, really called me, and he wants me to join Chiefs. I'm definitely going. And then second leg, we played Chiefs at um, um, old FNP Stadium. They they beat us five two, so I scored the second goal for Fiste Stars. But it was a great feeling scoring against Kaiser Chiefs at FNP Stadium. I don't care, we were not five yeah. two. They, they, it's they we expected. Not, this is Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah, and then, and then the offers started pouring in. After we got relegated, and then Bobby called again. But um, as much as it was a dream for me to play for Chiefs, um, at that moment I felt I was not ready, and I was honest with him. After he got relegated, so he wanted me to come immediately to join Chiefs. Shama, how old are you at this point? Were you telling someone that please hold on? Let, let me just pull my dream a little bit. I'm sure I was 20, 20, 20 21. Okay, there was but is this, is this a personal feeling or is this, yeah. you're also getting advice maybe from family to say, don't rush into something. Or was this just, no, 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 no. It, was, it was not, it was not an advice from, from, from the family. I, 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 I personally felt that I was not ready to then. And I knew um, deep down that that's that's where I'm going to play my football. Yeah. That's where I'm going to, um, you know, have my best moments in football. That that was my dream to to play for Chiefs. But I felt at that moment, no, I'm not ready. Yeah. So I went down with the team. Free uh, State Stars played for six months, and then they released me. So before they released me, I had a meeting with the um, the late chairman, yeah. the Tim Green. So they had agreed personal uh, terms, like the, the the transfer fee, yeah. uh, two clubs. It was Vets and Free Sisters. So in the meeting, he told me he thanked me, you know, for for my loyalty yeah. and my contribution, and he said he felt that. I'm now too big for the team, so he wants to release me and and allow me to join a big team. He has already agreed terms with Vets, so I must go and and speak to Vets about personal terms. So I said, no, I want Chiefs. He's like, no, no way, you're not going to Chiefs. What those was his? What guys, was the Democratic issue? Those guys will owe me. <laughs> like, no, you can't go to Chiefs. I will go pirate this if you are. I will go Chiefs. But what about Kolo Tabali? So I'm like, okay, I went to it. Yeah. And then we could not um, agree on you know, personal terms. But it was deliberate. Of deliberate. course, because you didn't want to go there. Yeah. And then later on, then I, I got a call that 
you can go to chiefs now and and um speak to chiefs so that night i knew it was done and i i listen i didn't even care how much was gonna end yeah it was not about the package it was about the dream it. now yeah you know um becoming a reality and and it happened yeah you you're one of the very few former Kaiser Chiefs players who actually had that kind of passion for the club. Do you think that that's still there? That that badge, that surname that Ntate Kaiser Mutaung Senior has built into this formidable brand, because it's a brand now. I sell it's fine anymore. Do you feel that those that are wearing that jersey today and let's say for the last five years have this passion? that you have, this passion that I will sabotage a potentially good life at a Vitz or at a Sundowns or at a Pirates because you Do you feel that there is still that love for Kaiser Chiefs Football Club from those that have been there for the last five years? I don't know if it's there or not, but at, at, at the moment, I don't see it. And, and I think we, we're not doing justice you know, to, to the brand. Uh, it's a big brand. It's an institution. You know, so many great players. They they graduated from um, that institution, and we need to respect that, and we also need to to value that. And like I I keep saying that, uh, don't 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 be too familiar with the environment, because once you're familiar with the environment, you become complacent, and then and then. Uh, it's mediocre after that. After mediocre, then but you've you made, you've made it to Kaiser Chiefs. You know it doesn't get better than Kaiser Chiefs, Orlando Pirates, yes. and Mamelodi Sundowns. So if you've yes. made it there, what more? So when you say don't get familiar with the environment, so you're basically saying you must always feel like they'll take it away from you. You must always feel like it's a new day whenever you day. You know that 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 desire that you had, uh, that drive that you had, that passion and and hunger that you had, don't lose it, yeah. right? It's a, it's a beautiful place. It's it's a beautiful place. One of the best facilities in the continent. Uh, you know, the professionalism is, is, is it's the best. When you get there, it's, it's, it's heaven. But don't relax. Don't relax. Continue to do um, what made you, you know, um, good, enough to get good enough to get there as well. So the challenge that we have most of us is that when once you get there, we relax because it's nice. You know, you 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 have options there. If you wanna train in the short shorts up to you, rain suits or this blue boots or red. When you're done, you put your stuff there. You take a shower, go upstairs, have nice lunch, and then you you go. It's 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 the same standard, you know, as as the 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 Europeans. Recently, I went to Arsenal for, for a tour. I went to, you know, the training facilities. One of the best. But it, it, Kaiser Chiefs is up there as well. So you must also be selfish when you're there. That I, I, I don't want to leave this place. Or I want to mark, make a mark uh, in a, this place. I want to emulate Dumelon Kune. I want to emulate... Um, Dr. Kumalo or, or the late Essin yeah. you know, when you go to Chiefs at, um, the meeting area or the, the, um, the lounge where normally they have, um, the food and there's a big portrait there of, um, that the Kaisam Dao, uh, Dr. Kumalo, uh, your late Essin Tueling, Brian Baloi, and, and there's another one on the side, uh, of myself, the World Cup, right? So players should be inspired when they see those, um, you know, pictures as well. Those, those are the uh, people that contributed immensely to the success of the. Some of those people are still around. So, yeah. so are those people, and I'm in company in Avelewena, uh, Spider-Man, E2 himself. Are you guys talking to Abomfun, Abom Tutus? Are you guys actually telling Labafana Labut, guys, your picture, it, yes, it's all nice to see your picture up there. But when my picture was put up there, I still didn't stop. I still didn't stop earning my place at Kaiser Chiefs. Are you guys whispering these things in these boys' ears? Do you have, um, a, do you have mean, a chance to? Are you listen, given the opportunity no, to? 
I, I, I haven't done it uh, in a big platform. So whenever let's say I bump into a Chiefs player, I'll always encourage them that, you know what, it's hard now, but focus. You know, don't, don't give up. Don't lose hope. Keep going. I know the chase is heavy, but there's a reason why Chiefs signed you. So don't let yourself and the team down, you know, and do what you've been doing um, in your former respective club and add as well. Because playing for Chiefs, it, it, it does not only require talent. It, it requires t a character as well. You know, when, when you have a huge following, um, you're bound to get a stick, yeah. right? So you must have a character. It, it, it's a, it's a period also that develops your character. It tests your, your, your character. Cause now you, you are a brand. You are an ambassador. You know, you, you'll always be chiefs off the field. You'll, you'll always be, be, be chiefs. So it's, it's that added pressure that you need to, to, to embrace as well. But it, it, it makes things better when, when you do well on the field. Cause that's where it matters. You know, that's, that's the business, uh, that, also brought you to to Chiefs. But you understand how difficult it is, right? You know, when you, got, when you, when, when you got to Chiefs, Shabba, I understand. The, your club was known as uh, the Cup Kings. Kaiser Chiefs, there would not be a season that goes by without that club getting at least one trophy. One. Every season, it was Cup Kings, nonstop. It's been 10 years now, but it's been 10 years. And you were still there when this drought started. When you left Chiefs, it was three years into not winning a trophy. It's now 10 years. So when you look at Lamachita, guys, just keep fighting. Fight for the badge. Fight for the reason why they called you here to join this club. They saw something in you. They saw you as one of the people that can contribute to ending this drought. But but it's not just the badge that's heavy. It's now this, this, this weight of I'm now part of a team that went from Cup Kings to no Cup in 10 years, right? How When you look at the club now, how do you think it can change? What would you do? If when you had the magic, the Midas touch, what would you do to try and get Chiefs back to competing with its rivals, with a team across the street in, in Amapagania, winning two trophies a season for the last two seasons? But how do you encourage this generation, this era, to turn that which a lot of players that have come before them couldn't? I think that there are that, that, that a lot of factors that um, contribute to um, you know, the downfall of, 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 um, the team in terms of success. Um, it's, it's not only, you know, players as well. Um, I think holistically, it, 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 it needs an, you know, a giraffe view. Yeah. Then, then you'll be able to see where, um, you know, challenges are as well. And, 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 and also, Chiefs is a team that, um, you know, engages with, with, um, all the stakeholders. They value the stakeholders input, more especially the fans. You know, when fans are not happy, they express themselves and the, the club listens. You know, for instance, like they would, they would say, uh, we want, uh, player X to our team. We want, we want. And the team would listen and they would bring that, um, let's say that player to, 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 you know, to the club. But then later you ask yourself that, um, does the player fit into the system of, of the club? Um, is the player the right player to play for the team at this particular time? Or do we need this player? Or we just sign this player because of Defense. his availability? As well, so those are the factors that you you need to check as well, and 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 also the uh, you know the coaching personnel as well. When you start something, when you build something, it's gonna take time, and it needs support and and buy in, and that requires patience as well. You don't focus on the success of of your neighbors. You build this, you must believe in it in it. You know, and work on it up until it it gives you the results that you that you want as well. So, also the team must go back to you know the identity as well, um, the the structure as well. 
there's great players coming from from um, the development um, that can can really really add value, but now they're getting lost uh, in the first team because there's there's no there's no system and structure in 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 place, and and uh, the players that we signed like your 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 Ashley Dupree, great player. He's a great player. He makes great runs. He's good. He gives you something up front. But is there supply? You know, is there good enough supply? You know, and and that's where a coach comes in to improve players. You know, you you work with what you have, but now you improve them as well. I don't think there's a bad player achieves, and you don't become a bad player overnight or over over you know one season. Some players there they need good coaching to to improve and now i think there's a the new coach that's coming in you'll see the change of attitude you'll see hunger now you'll see players fighting for the jersey and and then you you come to the realization that oh actually player x was not a bad player he just needed guidance he just needed encouragement he just needed uh, proper coaching yeah. so you need a a a a top, you know, uh, quality coach, a coach that knows what he wants, a coach that will set, you know, the expectations high and a coach that will demand more from his players. You know what I love about what you're saying is it, you need to fit. And that's an important thing because Chiefs has got the money to buy anybody that they want. If Chiefs wanted to, they could buy Ronaldo. Why mm -hmm. not? But will Ronaldo fit into a Kaiser Chiefs system? Now, yeah. we know, we don't know his exact name. There's no confirmation, but we do know that the coach that is coming is not black. The black coach that is coming, or that was being linked to that club, he's probably not going to be there, but he gets linked to Kaiser Chiefs every season. If Kaiser Mutaum Senior calls you to Natural Land and says, Shaba, I have the budget, I have the interest from him, and I like him, and I want him. Do you think I should sign Pito Musima? Would, do you think Pito Musima has the the DNA and is the kind of character that could make something of Kaiser Chiefs. Definitely. Definitely. If you had the I chance. I would sign him. Yeah. Fast, fast. I won't waste time. With, 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 with Pizzo, you get, you know, a whole package. You, you get a coach. You also get a mentor. You get a manager. And you also get a father, you know. And he's also, he's also has an ability to, to manage players. Remember, you're dealing with a group of players, 20, 30 players, different attitudes, there's egos, and, and they don't behave the same, you know. So it requires one to manage them and, and, and to bring the best out of them. There's no such thing as we, we must be treated equally. You can't, we're not the same. You know, there's that one player that you, you speak to him nicely and say, do this, do that, and then he'll respond and do it. There's one player that needs to be pushed all the time. There's, there's another player that, you know, um, needs a kick at the back. Then, you know, you get the, the best results. There's one that needs, you know, constant reminder as well. And then overall, then you, 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 you have rules that they need to follow or, or, or a, a plan or, or, you know, um, an, a, 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 um, like a team, a team rule yeah. or, or, yeah, like or a team plan that they need to follow as a team, yeah. but individually, uh, you know, we manage them differently. So he's got that. And he's doing it now in, 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 in the continent. You know, he's, he's, he now has a footprint in the continent and, um, in, 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 in Saudi as well, where there's, you know, uh, less black coaches. He's, he's there. He's doing it. And I think next step, in fact, I don't think next step should be Europe for him. Yeah. You know, he keeps breaking those barriers for him once again 
the dream that I was talking about that many of us see is far fetched. Now, now it's 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 believable. Now it becomes a reality because one of us, you know. He's living it. So he's sitting with two bronze medals at the Club World Cup. Exactly. He's sitting with three Champions League titles. You know. Made in Soviet. Made in Soviet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kaiser Chiefs fans are impatient, and rightly so. It's been ten years. Even former players are impatient. You guys say in Katera, Lowen Lindy, and Lindy Lama Trophy. Would it be unfair to ask whoever's coming in to take over now from Coach Kevin Johnson to try to do something next season? Finishing a Cap Champions League spot at least because we know Sundowns. Peter Musemani said Sundowns is going to win the league for at least another five, six years. That was three years ago. Do you feel that it's unfair to expect Chiefs from 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 finishing outside the top eight next season to be top three and at least with one of the three Cup titles? Well, they're not going to get MTNA because they're not playing there. But there's Culling and Nedbag. Is it unfair to expect that of a brand as big as Kaiser Chiefs? Can they do it? I think it will be a big ask. Um you know, for for them to uh, win a trophy or go all the way and, um, you know, qualify for for CAF. Um, of course, it's what we need. And and you, you cannot say to uh, players that, okay, we're starting this or to the fence. Don't expect us to, to win. You know, the primary objective is to win. And and uh, the team will definitely go for that, but bearing in mind that now it's a it's another building phase, and the building phase is a process. Uh, someone is coming in now. I don't know who it is, but I'm assuming it's someone from outside. And when he comes, he he he's gonna bring his own philosophy, right? And now players. I expected to buy into his philosophy yeah. as well. Another thing that we, we need to change in future. So you see, if we, we, we had a, a philosophy, uh, a structure, a system, so whoever was coming in was going to have to buy into the system that's currently existing. So you want, the, you want coaches to be the ones that buy into philosophies. Exactly. Around. Remember, Coach is one or is a group. The team is an institution. It's been there for all for all these years, right? And there's great results, you know, um, for for the past yeah. years yeah. as well. So this one, when he comes, he's, he must buy into um, the and that's vision what, and, that's and, what you and the philosophy. By, go back to the Kaiser yes. Chiefs identity. Yes, because the danger is that if I come to Chiefs and then I bring my own philosophy and say we... We play long balls. Yeah. We we play um, uh, on the sides. I want crosses, right? Whether it works or not. The day I leave Chiefs, when I leave Chiefs, I leave. I go somewhere else. You come to Chiefs. You don't like that style. You feel that does not work for you. You want to build from the back. So now with the same group of players. So now you must get players that you know, will fit the philosophy and have a, the team must have a buy-in. So now you change that long ball crosses. Now players must adapt to this new style. So when you leave, someone else comes, it becomes the same thing. But if a, a coach comes and, see, okay, and sees that, oh, this is how they play, he does his research, he watches clips, and then he can just tweak here and there and also add his, his, his knowledge and help the team move forward. So the issues about uh, the philosophy as well. You know, my, my take would be that if it's a great philosophy, then you must have um, an assistant that will learn from him yeah. or someone that will learn from him. And then this one, when he leaves, then it becomes continuation. Or even the same better, with the national team as well. Junior structure, that it filters down to the junior yes, structures. Yes, exactly. So when you promote a player from under 19 or 15 or 17, when he gets there, he doesn't struggle because he knows at under 12, we start from the back. Now first team, oh, okay, I'm used to this. We start from the back. But if they start from the back at development and then comes to the first team, we don't do this here. It's too risky. Played long, he struggles. We lose another talent again. 
that's, it brings me to Bafana Bafana. Majority of our national team comes from Mamelodi Sundance. Majority of our anchor at the back is Mamelodi Sundowns. From goalkeeper to defenders to our central midfielders. That's the Mamelodi Sundown style of play, playing from the back. And would I be fair to say that that style has now been adopted by the national team, that we are now starting to play from the back. Not to say we copied Sundowns, but that it's a structure that everybody seems to now be buying into. We are now playing from the back. Do you feel that your national team now finally has an identity? I totally agree with you, um, 100%. So when, you know, um, in the beginning, the national team was struggling. Um, they didn't have the core of, 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 of Sundowns players, right? And I also need to give credit to um, the national team coach as well, you know, for bringing in the core of Mamelodi Sundowns um to the national team number one they're very consistent sundowns um number two they play good football they've got you know charismatic players very comfortable on the ball and they've got you know um continental experience as well and you you could see when they play in the national team you know they're very comfortable on the ball and they also have game management. That's the experience that they got, you know, playing, playing in the continent as well. So the coach didn't want to change everything. He worked with what he had and add players that were not part of, uh, you know, sundowns, but they also contributed. So they were complementing each other on, 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 on the field. I mean, at AFCON, you had evidence, Maho Pale, who was a, one of our best players as well. Because they understood him. Also, he understood how your know, Tembas Wani played. Um, uh, um, Stoll as well. He played there. He's comfortable on the ball. So it, 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 it made things easier for, for other players around yeah. uh, you know, to play. Now, now we've got... Um, whether we like it or not, we've got a, a, an identity now. We've got a system in, 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 in the national team. Yeah. When people talk about Bafana Bafana, people from outside, they say, uh, you know, Bafana Bafana, they play brilliant football. They build from the back. Um, you know, they keep in position. They're very skillful. They're comfortable on the ball. They don't say it's sundowns players. It's, it's now Bafana Bafana. That's an important players. thing, isn't it? Yes. That, that yes, so now, you credit the fact that the majority of the team comes from this particular club, but you've got Apollos, you've got Jaden Adams, you've got exactly. Pesita, all of them are, are playing Rainers the Bafana. Rainers, they're playing the Bafana football. Exactly. And and you, yes, you give credit to 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 ba, uh, Sundowns for for the work that they've done, they're still doing, um, you know, with their team. It's yielding great results, not for Sundowns only, but for for the national team. Yeah. Even the Mufu Kings, um, um, when they come now, the Maswangai, when they come now, you know, yes, they'll, they, they, they'll add that individual brilliance, but now they're coming to a structure now, you know, to a system. They won't struggle. They will help them to settle in. And once they, they settle, they are regulars. We'll have the best national team, I promise you. Is it the kind of national team you see winning AFCON in the next? Definitely, uh, definitely. We we've taken good strides, um, even post AFCON. I mean, the two friendlies that we played, I think, including uh, Algeria, we played very well. Um, the last game, Zambia as well, we 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 played well, and 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 just besides playing, the the unity there is amazing. There's, there's brotherhood, you know, the camaraderie as well is there. And you, I don't think there's anyone who feels like an outsider, you know, that I'm, I'm, I'm from Staley, so I'm a Zulu, you know, and now I'm being isolated. Yeah. No, they're always like this. And you can see even when they, when they play, you know, build up. When they play, you've got Ron Wendell's also a player. You know, we start our moves at the back 
And he's got that ability as well to play a 40 meter pass through the middle, you know, bypass five opponents. And then we play from there. Whether it's Mahopa or, 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 or Reynas, yeah. you know, the, these ones, the midfielders, they now know how to, you know, pass um, uh, forward players based on their strength, which is also good. You know, Reynas' space, he can run, he can finish. Mahopa, he, to him, straight to him, he holds the ball and then he links up play. So there's that understanding, that's intelligence as well. Is this what was missing in the Shabbat Bafana Bafana team, the team that you were part of? And, and, and let me not say the one in 2010, because I feel like this camaraderie you speak of, it was there, you know, you yeah. and Kahisho and Ye Ye and Teiko, you know, and, and, and Kila, all of you guys seemed to understand each other, you know, right from the back with mm. Itu, you know, with Mbazo, all of you guys seemed, there seemed to be a click that was happening there. I just don't know where it all went wrong for you guys, but... The last time you played for your national team, this spirit you speak of, was is that what was missing compared to this Hugo Pros team? There was spirit. Um, we had good players, uh, you know, best players. I think I think then you'd have five, six players, you know, from Chiefs representing national team, five players from from uh, Pirates as well, and um, the 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 challenge also was. We are not consistent in in terms of 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 winning games. Remember, we we are in a we are in a society where you you know your success is based on on results, not on on how you play or or what you achieve on the field, other than uh, results, yeah. you know. And with 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 the the current crop as well. Is is that they they play well and there's there's results. So if you play well, you know you you give fans, you give the nation confidence and and hope. And when you play well and win, uh, it's 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 even better, you know. So sometimes a bit difficult to 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 compare generations because there's different you know dynamics as well. The eras are are, are different, but I'm I'm quite happy with with the with the current generation. Every year for the last 14 years, and let me say 13 years, every year for the last 13 years, that video always comes up on the 11th of June. Every single year. I think even FIFA agrees that 2010 is the best World Cup that this organization in its history had ever hosted. That video keeps coming up. Mm. That pass in the center from the Khadri, you, one touch, you look up, you smash it in the corner, and then the celebration starts, you know, Dwayne DeLocker can't hold himself in commentary. That was a beautiful day. You've, you, I don't think you will ever live that day down. Come the mm. Everybody around the world will keep reminding you that this, this signaled the greatest World Cup we ever got to experience. What did that day really do for you afterwards? Your life, your football career, your personal life, what did it do for your family? What did it do to your family? Every year when we look at that video and we see what you did, mm. what what did that do for you? Yeah. It was a it was a big day and and um I think eleven June will always be uh a big day for me and, and for me as well. And it's 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 even bigger than my birthday now. Because it's it's a day that I'll not forget, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm I'm being reminded all the time about um, about it and and the goal, um, big goal, in in so many ways, um, big moment, um, first World Cup on on home soil, Africa. I need to emphasize that because you know there was doubt. That is Africa ready to to host such a you know a big event, and we raised our hand that you know we are capable if given a chance we got a chance and we we hosted an historic World Cup, and secondly being you know the first player to score the opening goal, a goal that you know set the tone. A goal that made millions and millions of people to, you know, to rejoice. 
as well. So it, it's a big moment for me. And 14 years later, I still get the same love. And, you know, it, it's, it's also humbling when you get so much love from, from strangers, you know, and, and the love is not, you know, limited. There's no borders. Everywhere I go, they recognize me. You know, they, they compliment me. They speak so well about, you know, my, my contribution and, and, and the goal. So that has changed my life, um, a lot. And it, it's something that, you know, will not go away. It, it's something that will always, you know, outlive me. But what I, what I appreciate the most is honor more than anything is honor, you know, to get a text from someone that you don't even know saying thank you. You know, it happens everywhere. London, I was there. I went, you know, pitch side, um, Arsenal, Everton. I was even wearing a hat. But Arsenal, uh, Everton fans, you know, they recognize ah, me. I mean, come they on. Ever Everton fans, we've got Stephen they Pinar know. there. Who they they, they know. know South Africans like it's their own people. Everywhere. Recently, I got a text. I, I can show you even now. Someone was in Greece. Yeah. They were just there on holiday. So they, they, you know, they just asked them, do you know uh, Shabalala? And the person, I happened to, to be with them uh, not so long ago as well on the trip in, in London. So many messages on, on social media platforms. So I'm happy. I'm happy. I know you've answered this question many a time, but I, I think, you know, for our Smash Sports people, they need to, if you can even describe it, um, we are building up play from the back, you know. Um, Tahisho grabs the ball, picks up his head. He sees you down the channel. Firstly, you made that run. Were you anticipating? Was that part of training? Or was that a matter of individual talent is now coming to the fore here? You know, the country's vision, your presence of mind to know that down the channel, he trusts my pace and he trusts that I will get on the end of that ball. And what happens after that happens after that. So was, was that particular transition play something that you guys had coached were coached, something that you had practiced, something that you had envisioned in training, that if it were to happen like this, what do we do? In, I'm in the middle of the park, whether it's the country or yeah, yeah, but they know to pick me up. You then get on the end of that ball. And South African footballers had always been criticized for too many touches in the box, right? You didn't do that. You literally played clean, European football. That was Messi Ronaldo type of football where you got onto the end of that ball, put it in the right kind of channel, and you smashed it. In your head, was that how it was all playing out? That I'm going to get this ball where I want it, and this is what I'm going to do? Or was it just a in the heat of the moment? It was, it was just to sum it up, it was, a, it was a great team goal. And, and, also one of your training goals that you know you 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 prepare all the time and when when you know the moment arises then you make use of it um also i have to give credit to to the team you know that was a team goal i mean um mexico in position of the ball right we we were defending and we were so organ well organized and as soon as, you know, um, Mbazo um, intercepted that pass, it was quick touches, Mpela, Yeye, and, and, and KG. So as soon as KG had the ball, then I was already on my bike. You know, pass was perfect. Control was great. And, you know, your modern keepers now, they, they, they're not line keepers, they're sweeper keepers. Mm -hmm. So I knew that he was off his line, although the intention was to, to just lop it over. But yeah, second thought, I yeah just unleashed that powerful shot. And that's the and thing, right? <laughs> you pick your head up. 
I'm sure you're picking right. your head up and and tunnel vision. So you can't see what's happening behind the goalpost. No. You can't see those people. You can't even hear those people. I can imagine it's literally just you and this moment. Exactly. And you are able to exactly. still change your mind in that moment? Exactly. You 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 have little time in the game and especially at, at you know in a high level game. Yeah. You know, um, you try and, and, and remain focused all the time. So you, your, your level of focus must be at the maximum because anything can happen. I mean, football is about moments and that was our moment. You know, as soon as ball, the ball changes hands, changed hands, it was our moment. So when Basel uh, intercepted, it was his moment. Same with, with Yeye. And and um, a killer, and then KG's pass. It was his moment. So he 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 made sure that his role was this pass. Make sure that it's a great ball. He did that. Then it was Shaba's moment. Control, pick a spot, take a shot, and then it's in. Then it was a moment as as a team, as 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 a nation as well. Because you have little time, so. You must always be prepared. Anything can happen at any given time. Like yesterday, you know, the game was on 90 and then there was eight minutes added on. Italy scored. Uh, last 30 seconds. Last 30 seconds. So it's about moments and, and it was a critical phase as well. And the same, same as our goal was, yeah. was critical phase. Uh, 15 minutes into the first, uh, second half. It was a critical phase. So we made uh, use of that. Shaba, you lost the pushkas to Hamid Altin top, if my memory serves me well. Do you feel that FIFA was unfair? That given the moment, given the occasion, given the timing and given the execution, right? That that goal deserved to win pushkas? Or was Altin top's goal just too beautiful? It was um, 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 a beautiful goal. And... Uh, for me, for me, you know, being there was, 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 was such an honor, you know, being with the best in the world, uh, under one roof, you know, and, uh, also being recognized, uh, in, in that, on that stage, um, it was, it was, it was, it was so heartwarming because I was not only representing myself, but I was representing a lot of, you know, young kids and um, places where, you know, all hope was lost. So I was representing Africa. So I, I felt great. Yes, at the time, even now, I, I also felt that maybe, you know, given the, 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 the magnitude, you know, the, the standard and and the goal as well and the pressures in the moment goal, the pressure and you know being the first world cup but i'm not i'm not uh bit about it and i was not even then um i was happy that i got a nomination and 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 that nomination is a win on its own because they're recognizing 10 best goals in the world. You know, how many games are being played um, in a year in, in the world? So many games and so many beautiful goals were scored. And to be chosen amongst the best 10, my heart is full. You talk about honor, you know, that, that goal, that occasion, that moment, that World Cup, that day, the 11th of June, even 14 years later, it just fills you with a great deal of honor. Um, there are two sides to every coin. There are pros and cons in life, positives and negatives. Did that goal ever yield anything negative for you? Did, did anything that happened afterwards just that you would have wished it didn't happen? Or has it always just my, been positive? My wish was that, um, you know, to win that game, to qualify uh, to the next round. So you think that goal just was in vain, basically? Not really, not really. I mean, they're still talking about it now, still talking about it now. And I think FIFA, um, you know, they're always um, paying tribute to it almost every month. 
it's been 14 years now so there's there's value in it um uh, clearly but that's that's how i feel uh, i i i felt that we we deserved a little bit more um we prepared well and we we are all in high spirits and in, you know um good um good mood as well and in a in a right positive frame of mind and we deserved a little bit more before I let you go Shaba you've football has given you an amazing what 20 or so years of of an amazing career where everything fell into place for you as it should when it did you know you started beautifully with with Kaiser Chiefs in your development ages until you had to stop you were at Free State Stars and you know it got you an opportunity to be noticed PSL 11 you know uh, you you had 45 minutes to to sell yourself to the national team you know everything has just happened as it should you joined your the favorite your favorite club club of your dreams you you they you put each other on the map you put Chiefs there they put you there you won many a trophy with them you know you got an opportunity to taste Europe you know with BB um Erturum Spor you played for your national team scored an iconic goal all these caps that you managed to pick up with them there, I don't think and I'm sure you would agree with me that there's nothing that you can ask more out of football than what it has given you now outside of maybe just affording you the opportunity to contribute now and bring in the next Shaba the next year yeah, yeah, the next killer the next KG the next Mbazo the next Kune but with that the two decades that you've had in football so far any regrets nope 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 my heart is full mm. um grateful of you know everything um the lows the lessons you know and so many highlights as well and um i'm i'm just happy with everything i'm i'd be lying to you if i say uh, there's there's regrets no i've i've ticked all the boxes um you know playing for the national team playing for for chiefs winning trophies playing abroad so i've 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 ticked all the you know all the boxes and and i'm i'm happy and and i'm more happy that you know the the players that took this career path because of me you know there are players or even just um normal um individuals that um are doing well because of you know my influence or because of my help so that makes me happy so no regrets and on that note where what do i tell my grandkids about you what do i tell my grandkids is the sipiwe chabalala legacy what do you want your legacy whether it's in football or in life in general to be what do you want to be remembered for the lives that i've touched so my greatest legacy will be the lives that i've touched and boy have you touched many a life people in in london watching arsenal everton are remembering who you are shaba an absolute honor to be in your presence it always is always will be you know uh, i think south africans will agree with me when i say we, we we appreciate so much more than anything besides your talent and what you give back to football just your humility you know your feet have always been on the ground and you but you've still been a superstar you could have you could have taken any path in life but you've always remained humble you've always remained a true patriot you've always remained a servant of this game and this sport and and we really do appreciate everything that you've done and will continue to do whether on the field or not man go lose challenge when you retire please i'm going to you must stop letting us assume you would have retired you know what i'm saying but but we really do appreciate everything you've done for the sport no thank you thank you i appreciate it Well, there you have it, guys. A great sit down with one of the legends of the beautiful games, Piwe Shabalada.